and on. So listening to you, I'm sure, you know, when people hear all this, you know, t- horrific <laughs> uh, statistics, um, they're wondering, you know, what should I do? Am I, should I just stay away from all these drugs, you know, with a five feet pole or, you know, what do I do? When is it okay? When is it okay to use them? And when is it, you know, that we need to completely just, you know, walk away? Well, I certainly think that we have to be reasonable. You know, if you're truly living in a state where you do have hypothyroidism and you know, it might take six months of not eating gluten and supplementing with selenium and getting your circadian rhythms intact. If you know that, I am not encouraging you to suffer along the way, friend. I also think that it's very important to find a provider who actually cares about you to where you're not just a number like flowing through the system to where if you come in and remember, Pharmacists, physicians, we're bound by law to know what is recommended for us to tell you is recommended. That's what guideline-based medicine is, which is the primary form of medicine. And if you do not take that into account and say, okay, the patient is here today, their blood pressure is above you know, the Joint National Committee's recommended blah, 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 blah for their age and their gender and their this and their that, then we have to say, here's what we're going to try instead. And I'll tell you, friends, most people are simply unwilling to do what it truly takes to stay off of medications in a modern industrialized age. Because look, the studies and we can debate research. There's a whole nother podcast episode that could go into that, but we do have evidence that lowering your LDL, raising your HDL, keeping your blood pressure down, um, keeping your vitamin D levels up, keeping, you know, we do have evidence that these things can save lives long-term, but you don't have to be a part of that system You simply have to reduce your stress, get all of the toxins and toxicants out of your life, work on your gut health so that your food allergies and so your responses to allergens and antigens is not ramped up, clear out chronic infections. Gone are the days where we try to pretend like chronic Epstein-Barr and chronic Lyme disease is not a thing like we need to address. I mean, goodness gracious, if If COVID has taught us anything, it is that we have so marginalized patients for so many years who have said, no, I really think this Lyme is still here. Like, no, I really think this Epstein-Barr is still a problem. Now we have all this COVID long hauler syndrome and everybody trying to figure out what's wrong. Let's learn from the lessons of people who have healed from other types of chronic viruses and other types of parasitic infections and, and even chronic bacterial infections. It's, it's not like we don't think recurrent C. difficile infections do not exist. Of course, chronic viral infections exist and we need to pay attention to it and realize that viruses jack your cortisol response and we've got to get that cortisol back in order. We've got to get the circadian rhythms back in order. The more I learn about functional medicine, the more I believe that basically everything is either a cortisol problem or an insulin problem. You know, you work in anti-aging and insulin is so powerfully aging. It just accelerates aging. Cortisol accelerates aging. And so we just need to recognize that we do have the power within us to take control and look at what are these root causes that I actually have the ability to influence. I do have the ability to have some discipline and go to sleep a little bit earlier and and have some discipline and drink some more water. We can craft these behaviors, but you know, friends, like I said, most people simply will not do the work 
that it takes to stay off of the meds. Yeah, you're right. Because I hear that, you know, doctor, just can't you just give me a medicine? Just give me a pill to yeah. fix it. You know, don't tell me to do this and that, you know, just can't you find a pill? So, um, yeah, that's one of the challenges for all of us. But that's a great answer, you know, to the dilemma, a dilemma of, of all these medications causing all kinds of problems. You know, should you avoid it or not? Well, the answer is not to take it or not, is to look at what's causing your problem. <laughs> what's causing your problem and then be willing and determined to change it. Be willing and determined to change it because if you're not willing, then here's your prescription and I'll see you in 30 days to check your labs again. Um, and if you're also not determined, you will get discouraged. You know, I think one of the things for me as a practitioner and as a, as a clinician, I just want my peeps to walk away from me encouraged, you know, knowing that, Hey, you deserve to be healthy. You deserve to be healthy. And I believe that for you. I, I, I want you to believe that for yourself and see that and truly believe that you deserve